Ron DeSantis's decision to announce his 2024 campaign uh, on Twitter with CEO Elon Musk has unleashed new criticism of Musk and Twitter. A new article in The Atlantic goes as far as declaring, quote, Twitter is a far right social network. The author of that article, Charlie Warzel, uh, joins me now. Charlie, um, longtime reader, first time caller. Uh, Musk has been sharing conspiracy theories on Twitter for months. He's reinstated white nationalist accounts that had been banned. Uh, so why make this declaration now? Well, I think that uh, you can just see over the last couple of weeks, honestly, uh, you know, and despite what Elon Musk is doing with his own tweets, right, uh, you've seen the platform uh, as basically a like a, a safe haven for people who've either, you know, lost their sinecures on cable news or people who've been, you know, demonetized on Twitter. And I'm talking about uh, the Daily Wire, uh, which got demonetized a couple of their channels for uh anti-trans uh, commentary, and Tucker Carlson, who lost his, uh, his tenure on Fox News. Those, those people are seeing Twitter as a safe place for them to go and, and perhaps to share revenue. Um, and Elon Musk seems to be, you know, welcoming them in with, with open arms. And, you know, yesterday was sort of the, uh, the, the, the last sort of making all the subtext text where, um, you know, he's inviting Ron DeSantis to come launch a political campaign there. Uh, so I think, you know, this isn't about the content that you can necessarily see. You could still obviously see liberal, leftist, you know, mainstream media content, all sorts of stuff on Twitter. But when you talk about the actions and the outcomes at the platform that you're seeing on the platform, I think it's, it's, you know, it's really just balls and strikes here. This is a, a right wing social media platform. That's what it's courting. So Musk, if he were here right now, uh, would say, hey, it's just a free speech platform. It's just different than it was under the previous owners. And we're just inviting voices that were unfairly shut out. Um, why do you disagree? Well, I mean, I think that it's it's actually a a bit of a, a business strategy here. Um, when you are looking at some of the other, they're you know called alt tech, alternative tech platforms that have catered to conservatives, and I'm talking about you know Truth Social or Parler. Um, you're seeing that um, you know, their numbers have actually gone down since Elon Musk has taken over the platform, and that's because there's uh, really you know no real need to build a, a right-wing Twitter clone because Twitter serves that role so well right now. And I think, you know, if you look at, you know, Elon Musk's purchase in general of the platform, it was an explicitly political act. Yes, it's couched in the language of free speech, but what he's essentially saying is there is a lot of, um, you know, there's a woke mind virus out in the world, to, to quote him, and he wants to counter that by bringing all these different voices in and honestly, to drown out a lot of the voices that he doesn't like. And it, he, this is not a, you know, a town square. This is a, uh, a company that is run by a man who has a very specific ideology that he's not afraid to share with people. And I think he's making decisions with the, with the social network, with the platform, that are intended to advance that ideology. And you see Ron DeSantis announcing his presidential race on Twitter Spaces, which is an audio uh, as part, as, as a natural progression of that. I do. I, I think that, you know, he, there are um, there are a lot of platforms that, uh, you know, he could that he could go to that Ron DeSantis could go to. He's choosing Twitter because he sees the owner as sympathetic to him, as someone who's not going to, you know, say if he came on CNN and, you know, got raked over the coals, perhaps, or, or really pressed on a bunch of issues. Uh, he has a sympathetic audience here. And I think that he can see, too, that the, the people who are sort of left on Twitter now, after there's been a big exodus, and the people who are most sympathetic are, are these people who share this ideology, who uh, love that, you know, DeSantis is, um, has a extremely online campaign and loves to own the libs. I think that, you know, these things are, are real reasons why um, why DeSantis and his campaign chose Twitter as a venue. And I, I think that it's just more evidence that, you know, this platform is explicitly catering to and a safe space for uh, a, you know, a far right uh, ideology. Charlie Warzel, thank you so much. Good to see you. Good to see you too.